Hey guys, this is Scott, and before we get started, I wanted to let you know that thanks to the wonderful feedback we got from last week's show with Emily as co-host, we've decided to do more episodes of our classic podcast, X and Y on the Fly, the dating podcast. So within the next few days from the release of this particular show, you'll be able to go to www.scottandemily.com front slash podcast. That's S-C-O-T-A-N-D-E-M-I-L-Y dot com and download the latest show, which is going to be all about blowing up the chemistry lab. What is chemistry anyway? Who knows? Well, we're going to try to figure that out on the next episode of X and Y on the Fly. So we hope you enjoy that. And I also hope that you enjoy this action-packed episode on Friends with Benefits with my longtime friend, Susan Winter. Live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters, you're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. Hello again, gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay at Scott McKay on Twitter, Real Scott McKay on Instagram, Scott McKay on YouTube. And you can find us on the web at mountaintoppodcast.com. And you can go ahead and join the Facebook group, which is a thriving community of guys at the Mountaintop Summit on Facebook. Today, we're going to talk about a topic as I am sometimes a little bit embarrassed that we've never talked about it before. Something that I'm sure is going to get lots of downloads because it's a pretty frisky topic. And that is friends with benefits. What's up with that? What can be expected from relationships like that? Who has relationships like that? And how do they end up going sooner and later when you're into the relationship that is like that? With me today is a friend of mine. We've known each other for several years now. She's a terrific dating coach in her own right. She hails from New York City, and she is Susan Winner, returning guest. Thank you, Susan, for coming back and joining us. Well, thank you. I love being on your show. I love working with men, and I know you do too, and we've got a lot to talk about today, don't we? We sure do. And I'll tell you, based on what you just said, I absolutely love guests who know their stuff. And you're <laughs> one of those dating coaches who can just riff about relationships and dating and men and women at the drop of a hat. It's always fun to talk to people who are like that. So I'm looking forward to great things. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Well, today's topic indeed is Friends with benefits. And I think the term itself is confusing to a lot of people. Like, all right, is this someone who I'm just having sex with? I mean, the other term that gets thrown around is F word buddies, you know, just sex mm -hmm. buddies. Or is this someone that I'm sort of in a long term relationship with, but we're just not planning to get married someday? I think sometimes even the term friends with benefits has a hard time being defined properly, especially across the board. There's really not a common definition people have arrived at, is there? Scott, you're right. Like so many of these situationships, we've invented words to describe the vagueness of how people are hooking up. If we didn't do this 25 years ago. You didn't do it. You had a boyfriend. You had a girlfriend. Men approached women for the sole purpose of starting a partnership. Some guys would just be there to play. But for the most part, uh, you know, you didn't have to have all these different labels for in-betweens. I mean, to me, friend with benefits is different than an F-buddy. An F buddy is just that. You probably never leave each other's apartment. A friend with benefits, you know, after the deed is done, you might say to each other, hey, do you want to go to a movie or let's get a pizza? So I think my definition and the way I'm putting what uh, my clients and all the different viewers would say, I'm putting it into context of a friend with benefits is somebody with whom you have sex, but you like them as a person and you will be known to be seen with them in public beyond the bedroom. Does that seem to ring true with you and your understanding of your followers? Yeah, that sounds about right. And the F buddies are people who are there just to satisfy each other's sexual needs. I mean, they may not see each other so crassly as to say, yeah. well, this person isn't human. They're just my toy. I mean, they may <laughs> still have social respect for each other or respect in general, actually. Mm -hmm. But really, the purpose of their relationship is screwy. You know, sometimes there are those people in your lives. And I know there have been times in my life where I've thought, okay, dare I integrate this guy with my other group of friends? 
You know, like sometimes when they're isolated predominantly to a sexual role, you don't want to put them out in public. Sometimes the guys that I know, they're kind of embarrassed to bring this person out in public. It's like, okay, I sleep with her, but I don't want anybody to really see me with her because it's not the standard by which they would create for a partnership. So it gets, I think, at least friends with benefits were indicating, hopefully, that there's some form of communication and fair play inherently within that design. That's what we hope for. You, okay, you fall into friends with benefits for a number of reasons. One, you don't quite make the cut to straight out lover. Maybe. Two, maybe one or neither people are ready for a committed relationship, but they like each other's company and they're attracted to each other. So there are a number of reasons that you would default to this. Or three, you could default to this because people have a problem with labels and they don't want to admit that they're in something. So they kind of skirt around it with a label that's comfortable, that shows some kind of validation, but doesn't get them too involved in like, now do I have to be responsible for your emotions? You know, do I have to go to your sister's wedding? <laughs> Things like that. So it, there are a lot of different reasons that you fall into this uh, label. And it depends on who the people are and what construct they've created. Yeah, I would add to that list, people just don't want to be exclusive. I don't want one girlfriend. I may have multiple friends with benefits. And because there is no committed relationship involved, that's okay. Yeah, very good. That's another one. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned a couple minutes ago was that uh, this is sort of a new construct. And I would probably hazard to think that this has kind of always existed, but it wasn't as socially acceptable. So anytime we had people we were just having sex with and really not in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, it was more under the radar than not happening. Exactly. It was probably years ago, somebody that you were physical with and you backpedaled on all of their requests to go out to public or meet their family and meet their friends. Yeah, definitely. So one of the ways that this situationship, as you coined, love that term, by the way, (laughs) has been made popular is by a couple of movies. First one had Ashton Kutcher in it was called No Strings Attached. Probably the one that I think demonstrates it a little bit more fully and comprehensibly, and in my opinion, also better, (laughs) is the one that had Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis in it called Friends with Benefits. And really, the evolution in that movie is they're in a business relationship and decide they start enjoying each other's company and really don't want to admit it to each other. So they're looking for reasons to hang out. Next thing you know, they're friends. And then it comes out that they're both sexually frustrated. Let's take care of each other. Well, do you promise not to have any emotional involvement with me? Yes. Pinky swear, all that stuff. (laughs) And of course, the movie is very predictable from there. They end up falling in love and being perfect for each other. And, you know, all the women are happy and all the guys are like, you got to be kidding. (laughs) A couple of things about that movie as an aside that I want to mention just procedurally is if you ever wonder how people who are incredibly sexy and very popular with the opposite gender, as Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis would both classify as, certainly. Watch that movie to find out how people like that figure out who to actually get in a relationship with. I think so many people end up with the person they end up with. You know, like, okay, this person fell into my lap. They decide they liked me. We just sort of got together by accident and God forbid we break up because then I'd have to start all over again. (laughs) I think a lot of people end up with whoever they're married to even by default, Mm -hmm. whereas you may marvel at, say, Hollywood celebrities or people who are just immensely attractive, how they end up in a happy relationship with someone. And I think this movie demonstrates it quite well, because it really isn't about how attractive are you? How attractive am I? It's about a deeper connection that they realize they have before they decide to jump into a relationship, not to spoil the movie too much. The other thing that I think comes from that movie that I found incredibly interesting when it occurred to me is that if you are a man who really thinks women are only good for sex and you really don't like women that much, you're just horny and need to get off. That movie's just going to make you roll your eyes. It's not going to end soon enough for you. You're just not going to like it. It's going to seem dumb. It's going to seem like a chick flick. But if you are a guy who really likes women, you like the company of women, you like the idea of women, you just think 
it is such an incredible blessing that the good Lord would create female human beings for men to hang out with. That movie is going to be the horniest thing you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. I mean, it'll be better than any porn you've ever watched to watch those two connect. And I ran that by my wife and she started giggling. She's like, yeah, I think that's exactly right. So the whole idea of evolving from we're just horny for each other to actually connecting is really hot. But it's something that is set by definition in a friends with benefits relationship as a boundary that must not be crossed. How do you think people do generally at not crossing that boundary, Susan? I want to let you riff on that first person. Well, the difficult part about sex is that it activates emotions and you can't separate it. You really can't. People have tried to do this because they want to enjoy the goodies and be unscathed in the process. But you've oftentimes heard that uh, people are worried about catching feelings as though it's a cold. As if it's an STD. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. How can you be performing the most intimate act that two humans can do together and not feel some sort of overwhelming connection or a sense of intimacy? It's almost impossible. So humans have tried to deaden themselves to the joy of connection, true connection with another human being or on a higher level communion with another human being because the emotional aspect is tricky. That's the tricky part. So, but they want to separate the cart from the horse and still have, and it's kind of a package deal. And for your men, you may realize that no matter how well a woman tries to convince you that she can do this thing, she's probably going to have a meltdown. And that's very predictable because women are a package deal. Their emotions, most healthy women are integrated, their body and their heart and their emotions and their head, all kind of a one little jumble. And it's very hard for a woman to isolate just the sexual aspect and turn off everything else. Whereas for men who are biologically programmed to procreate, this is an easy thing. Sex is something you do. Sex is something you are geared to do. It's what we hate about you, but it's the truth. You guys have a constant green light for sex. It drives us crazy because you can actually have sex with somebody and say, you know, it was just about sex and you can mean it. However, it's the frequency. Frequently getting together sexually with a person builds a connection. And guys that try to eliminate all the discomfort of, oh, God, I might feel an emotion, can get sucked into that quicksand before they know it. And suddenly they've caught feelings as well. It's just a tricky transit. Okay, so you're talking about women saying to the guy, hey, you know what? I can handle this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's try. Oh, they always do. They always try that. Right. No worries. I'm cool. I'm a cool chick. Not going to give you a hard time. I, I know how it goes. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the more cynical among my listeners are going to say, well, these chicks are trapping us. They all want a relationship. And so, you know, she's feeding me this line just to get me to have sex with her. And then next thing you know, she's either going to forget to take the pill or something and she's going to get pregnant. Next thing you know, I got to marry her and it's a trap, you know, or do you think the reality of that situation is women really do think in terms of I'm going to give this a try. I think I can handle it. And really, they're only fooling themselves, not the guy. Or could it go either way? Number two. In the world of users and abusers, to be honest, oh, Scott, my philosophy, let me just, I'll, I'll own it. We get hurt from people who hurt us unintentionally. There are very few people so sick that they rub their hands together and think, wow, I am going to screw this guy over. I am going to trap him, get pregnant. I'm going to, I'm going to be such a manipulative con artist. That isn't every single person. So please don't think that every woman does this. Women have had to learn to have sex in our modern time period. It's the chip of the entry to the game. It's the stub that you buy to get into the game. I mean, would any guy go out with a woman that refuses him sex for three months nowadays? They, they wouldn't. They'd be like, you got to be kidding. I don't know what thing you're into. I'm not into this. But years ago, women had a safety net. It was called getting to know you. It was getting to pre-qualify the man. Am I emotionally safe? If I'm sexually expressive with him, is that going to backfire and just break my heart? So I think a lot of modern women have really desperately tried to train themselves to not be crazy girl, let it be, understand he's seeing other other girls, you know, kind of like whatever, whatever. I can be chill girl. I can be cool. But 
and this is the big with capitals, capital letters, B-U-T. More times than not, we're fooling ourselves because if we start to like a guy and we really like you, we really, really thought we could hold it at bay, but we can't. And then we're going to suddenly have an outburst and you're going to go, what happened to the cool girl I was dating? Now she's getting all crazy. Oh, my God, are they all crazy? It's just that it's it's very hard for us to control that unless the woman really isn't that into you. And she's just bored and passing time, in which case you're probably the one that likes her a lot more than she likes you. Well, there are a couple things there that warrant more conversation. The yep. first one is it's a very interesting take that I've heard before that women have kind of been training themselves in recent years or past couple decades to appreciate casual sex more because they have to, not necessarily yep. because they want to. Okay, I'm going to relax. I'm going to kind of deny this side of me that has a nesting impulse every time I have sex with a guy and I'm going to relax and enjoy some sex because that's how it goes nowadays. But Exactly. Their internal wiring as human beings, you know, the physiology, the psychology, the biology really doesn't match up with what they're trying to train themselves to do. I've heard that take before, and I think it's absolutely fascinating. I just came back from Chicago from a presentation because I've been traveling all over the U.S. meeting my fans and followers and, and clients face to face. And I met up with what I call an accidental boyfriend. It didn't mean, uh, you know, he was living in my building. Talk about lazy. Talk about lazy. I met him in the elevator. I, like, how lazy can you get? And uh, Scott, I told him straight up when I met him, I don't want a relationship. And you know what? I proved to myself for like, I don't know how many times over. I don't know how not to. I don't know how not to make it meaningful. I don't know how to not make it connected. I was very much at peace with the fact that he'd come to New York knowing he was going to leave. And I was the one who urged him to take a job in the Arab Emirates because that's where they had the biggest you know, money for him to make in financial services. He was like ran the whole show over there. So but, you know, I'm just thinking I really I did it myself. And I'm a relationship expert that kind of knows how people work. And I watched myself say, I don't want a relationship. And don't you know, I, you always get in and you want more. And I think there's a key to this that, Scott, is part of our human nature. It's like there are people who can work on an assembly line and never want a higher paying job or a bigger job. And then there are people that they do something, they get bored because – they need to go to the next level of it. And I think most human beings have an instinctive desire to get to the next level, the next level, the higher version, the higher version. You know, are we happy making what we made when we were 20? We want to make the most money we can. And I think women, part of human nature, not female nature, but part of human nature might kick in in that moment and say, you know, well, yeah, I mean, we're friendly. I like being friends. I like them for sex too, but kind of like, where's this going? And then they start asking those old female questions and some of the old thinking starts to pollute them and then they can't help but want to make more out of it. So this is where we get into our problems. Yeah. And that brings me to the second point that I was going to present based on what you said before. Uh, the elaboration really just helped start to make that point, which is you mentioned the woman starts feeling the emotions because she she almost has to. She's female. Yeah. Before we were talking about this idea of friends with benefits being different than just being sex buddies. So you have the emotions involved if you're friends with someone because you like them. You want to spend time with them. And then the sex comes along and makes things more complicated. My question arises when we start considering sex buddies, because people do that too. Is that going to also evolve into relationships and really it's just an underperforming version of friends with benefits at the moment and then you're going to become friendlier, then you're going to want more romantic relationship involvement later? Or is there sort of a separation women can do when there's no friendship element that keeps the sex purely physical? I'm thinking, for example, like when a woman says, OK, you may not be Mr. Right, but I'm a woman with needs and my vibrator is not yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. I need sex. And you're Mr. Right now as kind of a placeholder until I find this guy where I can kind of be more evolved and reach upward towards what I want more of in life later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this gets into some really interesting conversations. Um, exactly. So <laughs> part of women's decision is the hierarchy of how they view men and who they want as their partner, okay? Now, so when you're choosing a partner just for sex, 
the chances are very good that even unconsciously, Scott, so for your cynical guys, I know you're thinking of hierogamy, but I think actually it's really unconscious in most women that what they're thinking of is this guy is only good for sex. I really don't want to take him around my friends. He's not an income earner. I don't like the fact that he gets drunk on weekends. I don't like the fact that he's a stoner in the morning. There are lots of things I don't like. I don't even think he's that nice, but he's okay for sex. So we, when we categorize you in sex only, quite unfortunately, oh my gosh, I hope I don't get a ton of feedback for this, but I I think that for women, they've already degraded you to, that's about all you're going to get. That's all you're going to do. In their overall view of you, They think that's one of your main functions. And Scott, to be honest, there are some guys that don't have a lot going for them. They're not ambitious. They don't do a lot of things. They excel at one thing only. They're probably not even very bright. They do one thing well. And that's about all you can do with them. And to be honest, guys, there are women that are the same. You might call them disposables. They have the chick you pick up on a Friday night, and like whatever, whatever, because you're not going to bring her around your friends. You're not going to show her your parents, and you're just not going to even put her in a category of being a girlfriend. So before you get insulted by what I'm saying, please think about yourself first, because it's kind of just the way it is for human beings. We automatically put a valuation on somebody according to content, intelligence, ambition, success, personality, charisma, and for you guys especially, looks. Well, you know, the irony of what you're saying is I likely have a lot of guys listening who are aspiring to be that guy. It's like, oh my goodness, I would love to be used for sex by a bunch of hot women all the time. This would be freaking great. But the reality of that is very frustrating, probably equally as much for men as it is for women who find themselves used for sex and thrown away. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Back up. Let's take a poll of all the men who listen to this. I'd like you to do an after poll. Fill out a blank. How many, what percentage of men find it abusive to have be a sex toy? And what point don't? I, I think it's kind of hard to offend men that way. Well, fair enough. But let me complete my point before you rush to judgment about what I'm about to say. Okay. It's not that men would be offended and have their little feelings hurt. Okay. It's more like, wait a minute, all these women are using me for sex and I kind of wanted more from one or more of these women. And now I'm powerless in this trap where I can't get it. And that's making me feel less alpha. That's making me feel less like a man, frankly, because I don't have the power to pick and choose what's going on with my relationships. I'm no longer a chooser. Women will use me as a boy toy or whatever, but... You know, I really liked that one chick. I wanted to make her my girlfriend. And when I said that, she just looked at me and laughed like I had three heads. Like, you got to be kidding. You know, stay in your lane, buddy. And that may not hurt a guy to his core and make him feel like, you know, oh, my gosh, I'm destroyed because I now have a bunch of sexual guilt and I feel violated or anything like that. It's more going to be a frustration tied with I feel like I'm out of control. I feel like I'm not even in control of my own sex life. I mean, these women will have sex with me, but they won't. I can't decide on my own to do more with them. They're all rejecting me for everything but sex. And men don't like to feel rejected by women for any reason. That's what I'm getting at. So on paper, it looks really good that these women would all use me for sex. But when it happens, I mean, I guess if that's what you wanted to, it's all good, right? That's like a one night stand. But. If you wanted something more and she's laughing in your face when you suggest it, then that's when the guy is going to take it personally and go, okay, this is not cool. This is not what I wanted to have happen. And I feel kind of emasculated by not being able to be a chooser when I so wanted to be. I would love that if a majority of men felt that way. And that's really cool. It's kind of like welcome to the world of being a woman. This is our chronic state especially millennials, not me, but millennials. Millennial women are going through the revolving door of having sex with guys that can hook up with them just because they can. The mores of the time permit it. And the bottom line, I think, of our discussion, Scott, is that nobody wants to feel devalued. We all want, at the the end of the day, whether it's a friend with benefits or it's even somebody that we've hooked up with, we would like to have human respect and appreciation for who who we are and not to be minimized. Nobody wants to be minimized or excluded from opportunity. So I think all human beings want to 
want to be seen in their full capacity of what they're capable of offering, men and women. But what you described, I'm listening to every word you're saying, and I'm thinking how many women have told me bits and pieces of that is this is their dating life in New York or in San Francisco or in Austin or Miami. Well, no doubt. I mean, women are probably all feeling that. Mm -hmm. And granted, not a lot of guys are in the position of being used for sex on a regular basis by women. It's a rare guy who that would be the case for. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of extrapolating the situation such that this is what a guy would begin to feel. Because I really think as a human being, it wouldn't be that much different for him after a while, especially than it would be for women. It's exactly like what happens if you're a multimillionaire and women just want you to be their walking ATM machine. Exactly. It feels like an entitlement mentality. And I'd like to be more than just a rich guy. I would like to actually get along with you and connect. But I suspect what you're getting at, if we really get down to the kernel of this whole thing, is people are starved for connection and they're just not getting it anymore because of the rise of social media and dating apps. Everybody is acting more superficial. Everybody is looking at pictures in a profile and going, oh, are they attractive? Did they say something witty? If not, uh, you know what next? Everybody's starved for options all of which are plastic and not even real because we don't even know who these people are behind these blurry pictures yet. And we're feeding that social media addiction at the expense of real, actual connection with people in the real, actual world. That's right. I think that's absolutely brilliant. We've had about 15 different radio shows in this one segment, but they all branch out because the topics are such that you're right. You know, before we're male, before we're female, we're humans. And humans seek validation and appreciation from other humans. We want to love and be loved. We want to feel worthy in the eyes of people that we like or care about, or even people that we don't care about. So friends with benefits can work if both people are true friends to each other. I actually had a situation like this. I had to do a lot of exploration personally. All I knew was committed relationships, long-term committed relationships, decade-plus relationships. So I couldn't help people in this modern time period, Scott. So I might be the only woman I know that purposefully dated bad boys for six straight years. Bad boys, as bad as I could get. Half my age, no skill set for relationships, didn't have any kind of emotional connection whatsoever. I thought if I can move the needle at all on a guy like this and get to somewhat of a communication and partnership, maybe I can help help regular women. What I learned was amazing, but I still have the dents to prove my participation. But I can tell you this, that all people, no matter how deadened or wounded they are, they seek connection. And I found a guy who was friendly. And by my version of friend, I was included in all the social events. He was impossible. Scott, he was not relationship material for anybody. And that was a number of years ago. And he still isn't. He's like a man child, you know, international gigolo, boy toy. But he's fine with that. He's a Casanova. He's probably put pins in every single country that there is in the world, you know, but he's, he's a wonderful, charming, and truly cares about people, just not cut out for relationships as an adult. But he's kind and loving. And if you call him, the guy's going to answer. You have a problem, he's going to show up. So he knows how to be a friend while he's being sexual. I think what's the only dangerous territory is if somebody is in this position of friends with benefits And one or the other partner really, really wants an augmented category. They really want to be the full-on partner. It can be painful for them to watch their occasional friend slash lover go off with other people or come back and tell them about a great date. So what we want to make sure is that you're kind of on the same page with each other. That involves a lot of honesty all the time. Well, you should be able to do that with a friend. If it's an actual friend, you should be able to see friends with we use these liberal titles and to go back to your social media references, which are so brilliant. How many friends do I have on my Facebook page? God, I've got like 3,000 people. How many of them would take my call in the middle of the night? So when I first got on Facebook, I had like 59 people. And I thought, these are people who will take my call in the middle of the night. That's what I call a friend. The rest of them, I don't know. They're my friends. So friend with benefits, kind of... um, 
you know, we've really loosened our definition of the word friend. So it just means, I love it when people say, yeah, but it's not like I slept with him right away. I mean, we've known each other a long time. What does that mean? I met him out with his friends two times already. That, I mean, you know, so we've just changed all the rules to everything to edify ourselves in the, in the long run. But what would be really great is if you and your sexy friend have an agreement that you can enjoy each other physically and still be honest enough to share whatever you're thinking and feeling with each other on a friendship level so that you can be real with each other. Otherwise, you're in a kind of a bastardized version of you're kind of having sex, you kind of don't know where you're going, you're not sure if you're going to get emotionally triggered or not, and you're not sure if people are, are you treading water, do you want more? It gets a little complicated. Well, for my part, I think all of what you said sounds wonderful on paper, kind of drawn up in the early stages. Like, this is how we're going to be. We promise we're going to be like that. Kind of like how Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake are at that poignant moment in the movie where they start their friends with benefits relationship. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as much as we want to be honest, it's a little Pollyanna-ish to think that it's going to be so easy to be honest later. For example, what if the woman starts feeling a little more deeply for this guy, but she's thinking, well, God, if I tell him that, I'm going to lose everything. Then we won't have sex anymore. And and then she's thinking, well, God, I, I, what if I tell him that? Then, you know, everything's going to fall apart. I'm not going to be friends with him anymore. Then we're not going to have sex anymore and everything's going to fall apart. So maybe I better just clam up and feel into this situation a little bit more and let it ride before I'm, you know, so open with that feeling because he may get scared and run away and I don't want to blow it all. I mean, that's a hard emotional set to deal with. It, well, Scott, you're right. That's why it always sounds good in theory. And even as the movies have proven, it's a little harder in real life. Yes, it's a lot harder. So, I mean, yes, you can have all the good intentions in the world going into it. But as you get down the road, life gets complicated. Sex is complicated. Yeah, well, sex complicates something that was already complicated. Even <laughs> trying to relate as men and women. Agreed. Do you really think there are women out there who are outliers, perhaps, who can do this? Their psychological makeup, just the way they are, the way they've been raised, their personality type all conspires to make them perfectly okay with being able to do this? Yes, there are some women that are kind of uh, so go with the flow, kind of new age, whatever, and oh, everything is love that they don't have boundaries around who I'm with. And that can be very confusing for men. They can easily be your friend and have sex with you and then go have sex with somebody else tonight. They're more the exception than the rule. The other version of that is the stereotypical Samantha from Sex and the City, where she just categorizes you as a boy toy and that's it. And those females are very rare. Many of your male listeners, the cynical ones, think that all women are doing this and manipulating and trying to get something out of guys. But more times than not, women as humans, they've been given bad information from their friends. They've absorbed movies that make them think there's some fantasy life that's possible. And they don't get great instruction. And, you know, they just get confused along the way and get desperate and start reacting and start clutching and grabbing and pushing away. And all the games that happen as a result of our insecurities. And, you know, I've been trying to boil all this down to the simplest sentence ever possible. But I think all of the weirdness in any kind of dating or sex or however you want to position the sex is all about safety. Am I safe? Can I trust this person? Are they going to hurt me? That's it. And anything weird that happens is because we're trying to protect ourselves from being unsafe, as in being hurt, or trying to contort the situation so that we'll never be hurt. But I don't think you can be involved with any other human being for any period of time and depth of experience, as in sex, and not have some emotional reaction. It's even if you don't like them and it's just territorial jealousy. I just think it's, you know, we're trying to separate things that aren't meant to be separated. Yeah, I think that's spot on. And perhaps women who are okay purely with a sexual relationship long term are ever bit as much unicorns as that guy who isn't okay with being used for sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah keep those two away from each other. Anyway, wonderful conversation. I want to go ahead and 
forward these guys to your website, which you guys can reach by going to www.mountaintoppodcast.com front slash winter, just like the season. And what will those guys find when they get to your website, Susan? Well, I have lots of different YouTube videos. And I think I've got, Scott, I've got almost 400 YouTube videos in the last few years because I like to give very detailed instruction, break it down. And I just started an Instagram page. Evidently, you have to have these. And so it kind of shows you me off duty and behind the scenes. But um You'll find great articles. There are about 400 stationary articles on my site. Pretty much anything you put in the search bar that you want to learn about, you'll either bring up a video and interviews. I think I've had about 500 interviews in the last 10 years. I mean, it's just crazy. I get a lot of press. So there's just an overload of information if you have a question. Yeah, you're so prolific. You make me look bad. And that's hard to do. <laughs> well, way to go. I think that's excellent. So guys, go ahead and go to www.mountaintoppodcast.com front slash winter and get you some. Grab a whole wheelbarrow full and take it with you. Susan, thank you so much for an insightful and entertaining conversation. I'm sure these guys loved it. And uh, you're a pro and I appreciate everything about you. And Scott, I love being on your show because I love I love working with you and I really like the direction you're taking your men. You're informing them. Let's not forget, you have a very meaningful and profound relationship. So it's coming from a really nice perspective. And at the end of the day, we all want to feel like somebody thinks we're amazing. Really? And so you can really tell them from the inside how that is and how you get there. So thank you for that. Those are the two greatest words any attractive woman can ever say to you. You're amazing. <laughs> You're amazing, Scott. And women who are good with men know that. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. And I would love to work with you more often. We got to figure out ways to do that. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on out there. Yeah, no doubt. And guys, if you have not yet visited www.mountaintoppodcast.com, I may not have 400 YouTube videos and 9,000 interviews and 48 million uh, articles, but as perhaps not overwhelming an amount of content that I have, I do have plenty and you'll be able to find YouTube videos from our channel, download a couple free special reports that are very relevant to what you got going on. As you'll see, you can also get the YouTube version of each one of these podcasts and download transcripts for each one as well. And if you're not on my daily newsletter, you should definitely be on that because I'll send you fresh, actionable advice on how to get better with women and in your career and as a man every single day. And it is fluff free. And if you have not talked to me yet, you can do that free for 25 minutes. You can click the button at www.mountaintoppodcast.com and uh, talk to me directly one on one. Won't cost you a dime. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for The Mountaintop Podcast.